Okay, this video is on um, Chapter 5 in Advanced Accounting, which deals with consolidating the financial statements when there's less than 100% ownership. So in, the, in Chapter 3, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and Chapter 4, we're simplified a little bit to assume that the parent owned them 100%. Well, in reality, that's probably not going to happen. It's probably going to be very difficult for that parent to actually get the 100% of the um, subsidiary stock that's outstanding. So they're probably really gonna own a lower percentage than that. Um, so then that, that's a little bit more realistic. But now we have to deal with the consolidation. It becomes a little more complex because what we have now is what the textbook calls non-controlling interest owners. And we abbreviate those the NCI. Um, so we have a problem that deals with um, Consolidation subsequent to the acquisition and when there's upstream inventory involved. Um, so the upstream inventory um, will have to make deductions and those will come often that they come before we do the profit split. Um, if it was downstream, we would do the profit split and then take those inventory deductions. So we have assumed that on January 1st, 2010, a parent company acquired 90% interest in its subsidiary. Um, the total fair value of the controlling and the non-controlling interests was $500,000 over book value, and they give us what that relates to. So there's a table that says, okay, property, plant, and equipment is 20, sorry, 200,000 with a 20-year useful life, a patent for the remaining 300,000 with a 10-year useful life. Um, then they come down and they tell us that there's um, the, uh, the parent, sorry, the subsidiary sells inventory to the parent, which is upstream, and they give us the information for 2012 and 2013. So they give us the, um, the gross profit, the percent that's left in any inventory, the total sales, and then the amount of the receivable and the payable between the two companies. Then we come over and they give us the full income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet. And they'd like us as our first step to kind of map out um, what is in the um, acquisition accounting premium and um, kind of map out our, our uh, equity income. Okay, so, that's, so we'll first start with our equity income. So the equity income... Reconciliation, we always start with the subs net income. That's always your starting point. So the subs net income is found on their income statement. Their income statement says it's 174,930. So again, straight from their income statement. Now we're going to adjust it. So like when they told us to kind of map out that acquisition accounting premium, it's going to come into play here. So I'll kind of just combine it with this step. So we've got um, extra depreciation dealing with the acquisition accounting premium asset, and it was the building was two hundred thousand dollars over twenty years. So that's going to be ten thousand dollars of additional depreciation that we'll be taking through that acquisition accounting premium adjustment. Okay, then we also have a patent. So we're going to amortize that, and then that amortization is the three hundred thousand over ten years. So that's going to be minus thirty thousand dollars a year. So again, that deals with our acquisition accounting premium assets and the amortization and depreciation of those. Then we have to deal with our intercompany sales. So our intercompany sales say, okay. If we have gross profit left in inventory, we have to defer it. Then the, when the, the transaction is, the inventory is actually sold, we will allow those to come in. So our 2012 deferred gross profit is now sold in 2013, which is the year that we're in. So we can record that into our profit. So if we go to the table, it said that the gross profit deferred in 2012 is $17,500. So then now we're going to add that to our income. And then we're going to defer the 2013 gross profit because that is in our ending inventory right now. 
and we need to take it out of the, of the net income that we're recording, or the equity income that we're recording. And then that is 28,000. Now we can subtotal those. So again, the 174,930 minus 10,000 depreciation, minus 30,000 amortization, plus 17,500 of 2012's profit, minus 28,000 2013 profit that we're deferring. So then that leaves me $124,430. I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm not going to label that the equity income yet because then now we have to do the split. So 90% goes to the parent and then 10% goes to the NCI. So if I take that times 0.9, I get $111,987, and then that is my equity income. And then you always want to run your double check to say, okay, go to the parent's income statement and see that that is truly the equity income that we're trying to tie to. Now, the NCI, the non-controlling interest, they get 10% of that, and that's $12,443. And this is going to be a new line item that we add on our consolidated um, income statement. We're going to have it broken down to say this is the net income, and then less the amount attributable to the NCI equals the amount that's attributable to the parent. Um, so we'll kind of break those out when we get to that statement. Okay, then we want to figure out what's in our equity investment account. So we want to make sure that we have accounted for all of that. So I'm going to kind of block this out. Then we go through and say, okay, well, let's go through our regular entries. So we have our E entry. Um, now, this is where it gets a little bit more complex also because now the parent doesn't own them 100%. They own them 90%. So we do have common stock. We have paid in capital. And then we have our beginning of the year retained earnings, just like we always do. And we can pull those balances. So... If we look at the balance sheet of the subsidiary, the common stock is 100,000. The paid in capital is 125,000. Then go up to the statement of retained earnings and our beginning of the year balance is 645,565. So again, or sorry, 575. I'm picking those right up off of the statements. And then when I subtotal those, now I'm not going to be done. In past chapters, we would say, okay, that's it. That's our <clears throat> E entry. In this case, we're going to split it because now only 90% goes to the parent. I'm going to have to go. Sorry. Um, let me see if I can. Just take that up a little bit if I can. Okay. So 90% goes to the parent, so I'll total that over there, and then 10% goes to the NCI. So the 90% that goes to the parent is $783,517.50, and then the 10% that goes to the NCI is $87,057.50. So then now this is going to be our E entry. It gets a little bit more complex. Okay, then we come over and we say, okay, there's more in this account, though. We've got our A entry. So our A entry, we have our beginning of the year balances. So if we look back at the problem, the consolidation happened in 2010. We are now in 2013. So we would have had three years of depreciation, 2010, 2011 and 2012. So our property, plant, and equipment would have started at 200,000. We would have taken 30,000 off for our three years. So that would take it down to $170,000. Then the same with our patent, correct? Yes, the patent. That started at 300,000. 
and we would have taken three years off at 30, so that's 90,000. So then that would go down to 210. But then this too is split. It's, these assets are not 100% owned by the parent, they're only 90% owned. So then we take 90% and then we leave 10% to, <clears throat> to those NCIs. So 380,000 times 0.9, um, that gives us 342,000 and then 38,000 to the NCI. Okay, then we come to our C entry, and then our C entry, we've got our equity income, and our equity income is, no, sorry, go up here, the hundred, we want to do the whole 124,000, yeah, that's not right. Well, we can map it out. Um, yeah, let's, let's go, let, let me break this into two kind of components. So, so this is the parent's piece. So our parent's piece is the equity income is 111987 And then we've got the dividends. That again will be split between the, the NCI and the um, parent. So if we go to the dividends, those are 17,493. But I need to multiply those. I'll do it under here. 17,493 times the 90% gives us 15,743.70. So that's 96,243.30, but then we still have the NCI's income, and that is 12,443, and then the NCI's dividends. Because again, they get 10% of the income, they get 10% of the dividends. So 17,493 times 0.1, gives us $1,749.30. So then we kind of piece out the income section between, again, what relates to the parent and then what relates to that NCI. Now our depreciation um, stays the same. So our depreciation is still going to be the operating expenses And those are going to be the total up there, the forty thousand, um, and then then we'll switch it between the parent and the sub. But so then now, oh, the other the other thing that goes into our to our I entries, we have to deal with our intercompany inventory. So the only piece that goes into the equity investment account is that beginning profit allocation. So the beginning deferred profit is the 17,500, but that too is going to be split. The 90% and the 10%. So 17,500 times 90% gives us 15,750. And then that goes to again to the parent. And then this stays with the NCI. All right, now we can double check. If we take the piece of the parent's equity investment um, that relates to the equity accounts, so $783,517.50, and then we go up to the A entry, the $342,000 that relates to the parent. Then we go down to our C entry, $96,243.30 that relates to the parent. Okay, then we come down and we subtract out the piece of the beginning inventory profit adjustment. We get one million. Oh, that's going to be below my. You're not going to be able to see that. All right, let me go up here. All right, we got a sum of one million two hundred six thousand 
$10.80. And you, you can round the cents if you want. But so again, that was this total here, the E that relates to the parent, the A that relates to the parent, the C that relates to the parent, and then the I. This is a minus, though. I'll put that in there. The I that relates to the parent. So when you sum those up, you always want to double check that that equals your equity investment on um, the balance sheet, and it does. So then you now, now you kind of know, okay, I've properly mapped all of that out. Now I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to erase this piece, and then I'm going to kind of do um, the I entries. So again, um, maybe what I'll actually do is just move over to the extra space and we'll do all of the entries. So let me get you the camera over. So then that way I don't have to um, keep erasing. All right, so then when we come, after we've kind of mapped it out and we know, okay, we've dealt with our equity income, we've dealt with our equity investment, now we need to create those consolidating journal entries. So we start with our E. So our E, we take the common stock, the paid in capital, and the beginning of the year retained earnings off of the books in total. So again, that's the 100,000, the 125,000, and then the 645,575. Now again, thinking back to your prior chapters, we would just have one credit that went in total to the equity investment. Now we say, okay, they don't own them 100%. So 90% is going to go to the equity investment, and that's that $783,517.50. And then the other 10% goes to this account called NCI. And then that is going to be the $87,057.50. So again, the entry is very comparable other than the credit. The credit now breaks it out by 90% to the parent, 10% to the NCI. And then you'll see we do the same thing in our A entry. So our A entry, we set up the property and plant and equipment at our beginning of the year balance. We set up the patent at our beginning of the year balance. But when we come to the credit, instead of just taking that whole total to equity investment, 90% goes to the equity investment, the $342,000. And then 10% goes to the NCI, because now there's these non-controlling interest owners that have 10% of the stock, and they have 10% of the interest in the assets. Okay, then our C entry. So our C entry, we say, okay, we need to take the equity income off of the books, at the 111987 Then we're going to have this new account that is the um, NCI's interest in net income. And then that is going to be the 12443 And that's going to be a new line item on the income statement itself. Then we can eliminate the dividends. Now, the, the dividends can be eliminated completely. So, we, so I broke them out over here, but we can go back and just eliminate them at 100%. Then the equity investment is going to be the, the, what we broke out, the 96243.30. Okay, then if we kind of just double check how we're doing this entry, because this is the one that's probably the most confusing. The difference that we still need is what, if you look back over to the notes prior, what I showed is the NCI. When I had their net income minus their share of the dividends, it was the 10693.70. So that goes into the new account called the NCI. And then our D entry, again, is the same as before, just our operating expenses.
at the 40,000 and then we break it out to property, plant, and equipment, accredited 10, and then the patent, accredited 30. Okay, then we get into our I entries. So our I sales is the same as what it's always been, um, or what it was the last chapter. We eliminate the entire sale. So that's $341,200. And that's a debit to sales and a credit to cost of goods sold. Okay, then we deal with our, um, our beginning, well, I'm going to do the end of the year first. Our ending inventory first, because then what that's saying is, okay, all of our inventory wasn't sold. It all didn't go to cost of goods sold. So we take part of that out of our cost of goods sold. And the ending inventory is 28,000 and then we take all of that out of the inventory balance because again the inventory is currently overstated so that one doesn't change then now our beginning of the year one is the one that we have to adjust between the two so we say okay um, we need to debit the equity investment And the NCI and then we credit our cost of goods sold so we're allowing the profit to run through that's why we credit the cost of goods sold so that's the 17,500 but then we're splitting it between the equity investment I'm going to shorten that a little bit so I can get my debit in there we're splitting that between the parent which goes to the equity investment and then the NCI the non-controlling interest so then that that goes back to what I had over here the 15750 goes into the equity investment, and then the 1750 goes into the NCI. Then our final receivable or payable, however you'd like to abbreviate that, that we need to eliminate is $100,000. So we need to take the payable off the books at that $100,000, and then the receivable off the books. At 100,000. So then those are going to be all of our I entries. So then you can take those I entries, or sorry, yeah, you can take all of the entries, but those are all of our I entries. But then now take all of these entries that we've mapped out and then put them into the Excel worksheet for your consolidation. And those are out there in Blackboard. You can see the consolidated um, worksheet that has all those entries in there. But then now you can see there's a lot of steps but it definitely is a little bit more realistic because companies rarely do have 100% of the end of the stock outstanding. There truly are non-controlling interest owners in most of these consolidations.